Severe weather season is here, so we're going to talk about how to make a storm report. Keep watching for more. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community. If this is your first time here, please consider subscribing to the channel. Early spring through late summer is the peak season for severe weather here in the U.S. But severe weather can hit any time and anywhere. I've seen, in Wisconsin, I've seen tornadoes in January and snow in June. So uh, being an active participant in your local storm spotter group is an important component in keeping your community safe. Locally, either in late March or early April, our National Weather Service office holds its annual severe weather storm spotter training. We just had ours about a week ago and I was really impressed by the record turnout that this training brought. Even if you're not considering to go out into the field to be a severe weather storm spotter, attending the training is a great opportunity to learn about the dangers of severe weather and how to keep yourself better prepared when uh, severe weather strikes. I've been a severe weather storm spotter for almost as long as I've been an amateur radio operator. I've been out in the field and also ran the net control station, so I've got a pretty good idea what's necessary to keep our net control operations running efficient and orderly. So you've taken the training, you're ready to hit the road uh, when the next call out it comes up for a severe weather storm net. Uh, what, are you gonna, what are you gonna need? Well, you're gonna need two things. Number one is you'll need to know the severe weather storm reporting criteria and also the proper reporting format. Uh, these two items will help the net control station keep that net running orderly and efficient. Uh, the criteria I'm gonna describe is what we use in our own uh, net and operations here. But in other regions and areas, uh, their criteria might be slightly different, but this is a pretty good approximation of what you're going to find for most nets uh, across the country. So, as a severe weather, as a storm spotter, what are we looking for? Well, the reporting criteria for, in level of severity from highest to lowest is as follows: your tornadoes, funnel clouds, wall clouds, either rotating or not, hail, winds in excess of uh, 45 miles an hour rain in excess of one inch an hour, or localized flooding. If you experience any of these events or anything else that the Weather Service is looking for, you're gonna to wanna to give a storm report using a consistent format of who, what, when, and where. So let's break that down. First off, who, who are you? If you're an amateur radio operator checked into a severe weather net, uh, giving your uh, call sign will be sufficient. What occurred? Remember the criteria. That's the information that the Weather Service is looking for. Be specific as you can. If you are reporting wind speed, hail, or rainfall, tell us if it's an estimate or an actual measured observation. When was it? If you observed the event five minutes ago, give the time of observation, not the current time. For wind and hail, also report the event duration time. Where was it? Be descriptive. Use an intersection, address, or fire number. If you're um, not sure of your location, give distance and direction from the nearest city or landmark. Latitude and longitude are also good descriptors of your location. And that's it. Be precise, be brief, and don't try to fill up time and add extra information. The net control uh, station will report back to you what they've received and ask for any additional information or clarifications. Make corrections if necessary. I found that in, in taking storm reports, it's best to have a little notebook with you so you can re record those observations and refer back to them if there's any um, questions later after the event has transpired. This is KB9 DBR. We're experiencing heavy rain, estimated in excess of one inch an hour. Time is 2.15 p.m. The location is Bridge and West Hill Drive in Wausau. Finally, let's talk a little bit about damage reports. Damage reports will often be taken at the discretion of the net control station. The weather event may have passed your location, but there could still be active weather in another area of the net. So please hold those damage reports until net control station asks for the damage reports or after or, or towards the conclusion of the net. The only, uh, the only time that you would want to immediately give a damage report is if the damage is uh, pertinent to the net or there's uh, the, uh, uh, the possibility of personal safety involved. So as a, uh, 
As a storm spotter net, our primary concern is the active weather occurring now, and damage reports is a secondary function. Well, that in a nutshell is how to give a severe weather storm report. Are you involved in a severe weather spotter group? I'd love to hear your advice or any questions you may have. You can leave them in the comments below. I'd like to see how other uh, severe weather spotter groups across the nation are operating. And as always, uh, if you like this video, you know, give me that big thumbs up. Check out the blog at www.jpole-antenna.com. And also, don't forget to subscribe if you're new to this channel. Subscribing is your way to be notified when new videos are released. That's it. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.